Hi, and welcome to Hypnotize Me, the podcast about hypnosis, transformation, and healing. This is Dr. Elizabeth Bonet, and I'm your host. This podcast is not a substitute for mental health treatment, nor should it be. If you need therapy or hypnotherapy, please seek a trained professional. I do hypnosis all over the world, so if you'd like to learn more about me, you can do that at my website, drlizhypnosis.com. That's D-R-L-I-Z hypnosis.com. Now on to our episode. Hi everyone, Dr. Liz here. And this will be a brief episode, but I did want to put one out. I'm still dealing with reduced computer time because of the cataract surgeries on my eye. I'm having the second one done next Monday, so I should be good to go by like Wednesday or so. But right now I can only spend about 10 or 15 minutes on the computer, if that. So this is going to be a brief episode, so I don't have a whole lot of editing to do or uploading or all of that. But I thought, well, what's really helpful right now for people would be some tips about how to handle relatives during the holidays. This is a big hot spot, right? I know Hanukkah happened early this year, and I apologize to my listeners who celebrate Hanukkah that I didn't have this one out earlier, but I still wanted to put it out for people who celebrate some of the other holidays that are happening in December, like Christmas, or even listening to this around some of the other holidays that come and go throughout the year. Being around family is difficult, often. It is not an easy situation, particularly if you're talking about large family gatherings where there's all kinds of cousins and aunts and uncles and friends of aunts and uncles or partners and second cousins, I don't know, great big family gatherings where you may not like everybody, or you can predict like who's going to say what, and you know that you don't want to get into that conversation, or you can predict their questions. It is not always easy. So I totally get it. So let's talk about some strategies for you to use. In dialectical behavior therapy, DBT, we talk about coping ahead. Now, in my office, when I'm seeing people who have anxiety, one of the things I notice over and over is that the thought process stops at a certain point because the anxiety becomes too overwhelming, right? It's like, no, I can't think about that. It's just too anxious. And even your body starts to react sometimes, meaning like your heart rate starts going, you, your you start sweating, like you really don't want to think about it. I totally get it. That is distressing. But often what happens is that when you stop at a certain point, you're cutting off coping skills for yourself because you're assuming anxiety is going to kick in or I have to deal with this bodily reaction right now. So let me do that instead of saying, okay, look, I can make some choices here to make this easier for myself. So let me think ahead about this situation. Let me handle some of the anxiety, even if it's coming up now, I'll use some breathing or eye roll techniques, some hypnosis, whatever you need to do in the moment. Even telling yourself, this is gonna pass, this is gonna pass. Let me just think about how I can cope with this ahead of time what I can actually do. Let me make some plans here. So really coping ahead is making plans, okay? They like to put a big fancy label on it, like cope ahead is one of the skills in the DBT workbook, right? But really it's just planning. That's it, it's planning. Like, okay, I know that this situation is not gonna be great. There's gonna be some parts that are good and some parts that aren't so good. So now what can I do to minimize the parts that aren't so good and to maximize the parts that are better for myself. So I know this is listened to all over the world, and I'm just gonna throw out some tips that may or may not work for you, but they have worked for many of my clients. One thing is that if you have smaller children, then they're great around holidays, okay? Often parents will go in thinking like, oh my God, I'm gonna have to protect my kids, it's gonna be a nightmare and all of this stuff. They're also great for taking yourself out of a situation. Meaning like, oh, sorry, I have to take the kids to the park, okay? Even if it's like 30 degrees below, (laughs) like bundle them up, I gotta take them to the park, maybe an indoor park that's happening, right? 
Or um, I need to make a trip to the store. I forgot something for one of the kids, right? Or this one really needs a nap. So I'm going to go in one of the bedrooms and just see if I can put her down. Or this one needs nursing. So I'm going to go over here where it's quiet because she gets distracted. So they give you built-in breaks, right? So that's one thing to consider. That's a way to perhaps take a break yourself from some of the intensity of a family gathering, or perhaps if, you know, somebody starts talking to you that you don't really like or appreciate, you can say, you know, I really need to do this, this, and this for the kids. That's an easy way to escape. So I do suggest that you rehearse and practice this ahead of time. That is part of the coping ahead skill is rehearsal, like rehearse in your mind the situation, try to put yourself there, say you don't like talking to your uncle Bob. So you rehearse, all right, Uncle Bob's going to approach me. He's going to say something that I don't like or I feel is inappropriate or ask me some stupid question that I don't want to answer. And then rehearse in your mind, this is what I can do or this is what I can say. Now, it's not always going to go exactly like you think, right? Because in our mind, the other person doesn't talk back as much, right? (laughs) So it all goes perfectly in our mind. Believe me, I know this from experience. And then when you're in the situation, they say something unexpected because they're a person. You can't always predict what they're going to do or say. So when I'm saying rehearse, recognize that and say, all right, it's okay if it doesn't go exactly like I think it's going to go. I still have an opportunity to practice one of my skills. I still have an opportunity to escape the situation. I still have the opportunity to respond in a way that feels good and ethical to me. Let's talk about some verbal responses here. This one I heard my husband use during Thanksgiving, and it was just fantastic. I never heard anyone really say it like this, but he said, this conversation needs to end. I was like, wow, (laughs) okay. It was a really uncomfortable conversation. It was not one that needed to be happening. And he said it just like that. This conversation needs to end. And then it did. It ended. We changed the topic. We talked about something else. There was a somewhat awkward uh, silence for a moment. Like, okay, as we all took that in. But then we talked about something else. So that's a strategy for you to use. Another one is if someone's asking you a question you don't want to answer. Like, why aren't you married yet? Or why don't you have kids yet? Or why did you get divorced? Something like that. One verbal strategy you can use is putting the question back on the person. And this sounds like, oh, you're asking why why I got divorced. Do you want the full story? Do you want the short version? Or what was your divorce like? Or why haven't you ever gotten divorced? It's turning the question back to them so you don't have to answer it. If someone's asking, why aren't you married yet? You can say, you're asking why I'm not married yet? And they say, yeah. Let's play this one out for a little bit. They say, yeah. You say, okay, well, why are you asking why I'm not married yet. Well, then they have to come up with a response, right? And at that point, you can either decide to engage in the conversation or say, I don't really want to talk about it and just turn your body away, (laughs) do something else, right? Nonverbal body signals are a great way to shut down a conversation. If someone's approaching you and you turn your body away because those cookies look really delicious over there, And you can head them off at the start and say, would you like a cookie? Who made the cookies? Um, Are these your favorite cookies? What are your favorite cookies? Then often that will head off a conversation that you think is coming, but you don't want to have with that person, right? That's your private business. and You prefer not to have it with that person. Another strategy is to have a book that you take with you and you really want to read or, you know, phones, as much as we hate phones, that everybody's staring at their phones. They're also a great way to like not engage in conversation with someone that you don't want to talk to. Okay. Like they really are. And um, it was funny this year at, at the Thanksgiving gathering, I actually had not been on my phone almost the whole time, but the the five minutes I pulled it out to actually text my daughters who were in Florida and I was in Arkansas. One of the 
older people, I commented on it. Oh, we can see who the youngins are right here. You know, the young ones are on their phones, right? And the older ones aren't. And I just like totally bust out laughing and said, oh my God, I have not been called young in a really long time. Like, thank you so much. I think I'll stay on my phone just to like hear it again, right? So you can always make a joke if you're on your phone or you can just laugh it off and just say, yep, I'm on my phone. I've got to stay in touch with my friends or I've got to stay in touch with my kids or um, yeah, I want to see what's happening over here. Or did you hear this new story? Or you can show a funny meme. It's a good distractor, your phone. So that's one strategy that with the proliferation of cell phones these days, you don't often hear, right? <laughs> totally use your cell phone during the holidays. <laughs> and hopefully the house won't have one of those baskets where you have to put all your phones, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, most psychologists are probably giving tips about how to stay off your phone during the holidays, but no, not this one. Like if you're going into a large family gathering, make sure you have your phone on you. <laughs> okay, anyway, let's do one more strategy and then I'll wrap it up for this episode. One more strategy is to know your own limits. So what does this mean? This means that if you know that you can be at a family gathering for about two to three hours and then you'll start to feel really tired and grumpy and overwhelmed, know that about yourself and then take care of yourself and say, hey, you know, I can only stay until one o'clock and then I have to go. Or, hey, you know, um, there's a movie playing at three o'clock and I know if I get there at 11, I leave at two to 30, I'll make the movie just fine that's another strategy, right? So that you build in a break for yourself. I know that I can be there from 10 to noon and then I need to take a little walk somewhere, just get a little time for myself, go down and have a drink somewhere if you wanna do that. I, you know, I'm not recommending drinking large amounts of alcohol during the holidays because that can often make things worse. But if you want to have a, a drink somewhere and it gives you a nice little break, that's a good strategy of like, I'm going to head down to the pub and I'll be back in about an hour or something, something like that. Oh, a final tip is avoidance, right? If there's someone you really don't like and you don't want to talk to, try your best to avoid them. Like you can have compassion for them at the same time. Okay, like, all right, I don't know what's happened in their history or who raised them or what went wrong, or maybe they just came out wrong. Sometimes it's not parenting at all, or maybe something happened in their life, but I don't like them. I don't like their vibe. I will just try to avoid them. That's it. Now, obviously for smaller gatherings, that's harder, right? To try to avoid somebody, but you can choose where to sit yourself and, um, what conversations to engage in and just sort of, you know, keep them in your peripheral vision or something. But avoidance is a perfectly acceptable strategy. You can combine avoidance with compassion. You can still have compassion for them and their own inability to relate well to you. Okay. <laughs> like who knows? Who knows what it's like to not be very likable to people? Who knows? I'm assuming this person isn't likable if you don't want to be around them. Who knows? Maybe they're obnoxious, whatever. Maybe they need their ego fed constantly and you just can't do that. That must be really hard to constantly need compliments from others or to live only for how you look and not have any kind of inner world going on, right? That must feel empty inside. Like, ugh, you can have compassion for that and you can avoid them. You can also just say, I don't feel well, right? That would be accurate. It's not a lie emotionally, you don't feel well. So you're just going to take a break or perhaps you're not going at all. You know, an option that I don't hear from a lot of people is just not going. I know a lot of people feel very obligated to be around family, to fulfill some kind of need, or the guilt is more overwhelming to them than the peace of mind they may get from not going to the gathering, but that's an option. If there's something you feel like you just can't handle this year, you can just say, I'm not feeling well. I'm going to stay home. I don't want to get everyone sick. Whatever that is of saying, I just can't do it this year. That's always an option that's open to you. It's a door that's open, maybe a difficult door, but maybe a better door than stepping into the door that makes you 
really uncomfortable or maybe even physically sick from being around people you don't want to be around. So that's my final strategy right there. Don't go. All right. (laughs) I hope that one of these tips helped you. Yeah, I said to one of my clients the other day when they were leaving the office, hope you have a manageable holiday. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay, so let's wrap this episode up so that I can get it out to you. I hope you all have a manageable holiday. Okay. And I'll see you in the new year. Peace. I hope you truly enjoyed today's episode. Remember that you can get free hypnosis downloads over at my website, drlizhypnosis.com, D-R-L-I-Z hypnosis.com. I work all over the world doing hypnosis. So if you're interested in working with me, please schedule a free consultation over at my website and we'll see what your goals are and if I can be of service to you in helping you reach them. Finally, if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to the podcast or tell a friend. That way more and more people learn about the power of hypnosis.